Welcome to the to your first lesson on quadratic equations. So here's our unit goals. To understand the difference between a quadratic function and an equation. To use graphs of quadratic functions uh, to solve corresponding quadratic equations. To solve quadratic equations by algebraic methods including, including using the quadratic formula. And to model real life situations with quadratic equations and solve problems with them. So those are our unit goals. And so here, we're going to start here. Today's topic, solving quadratic equations by graphing. And for today's goal, I know the difference between a function and an equation, and I can use the graph of a function to solve for a given quadratic equation. So we're going to first learn what I mean when I say function or equation for quadratics, because functions have an equation as associated with them. So I want you to know um, the difference between them. So a quadratic function is a relationship that has an infinite number of points that satisfy its equation. When we plot these points on an xy grid, we get the typical shape of a parabola. So like this one here, this is the parabola y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. And every single point on this parabola, like that one, the vertex, or this one here, or this one up here, all of those, if I sub the x value of the coordinate in here, I would get out the corresponding y coordinate. So in this case here, if I subbed in positive 4 for x and then did the math, I would get a y value of negative 6. Okay? That's what a quadratic function is. It's all of the points on the graph satisfy that equation. Now, for a quadratic equation is an expression we wish to solve. It will not have an infinite number of solutions that make it true. So in this case, this says negative 6 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 10. Now notice there's no y value here. Instead of the y value, I have a negative 6. So I'm not concerned with every single y value. I'm only concerned with y values that are negative 6. So we want to find a value of x that when I plug into the right side of the equation, then I'm going to get negative 6 out for y. Since this expression is simply the parabola that I graphed up above, so this expression is really the parabola I graphed up above, so I'm only concerned about when y is actually negative 6. And we can find those two points right here. This point here and this point here is when y is negative 6. So those are the only points I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about this point here because that's on the y is negative 6 line, and this point here that's on the y is negative 6 line. So what values of x correspond to those? Well, that's these ones here. So 2 and 4. So I'm going to check them to see if when I sub them in, do I actually get 2 and 4? Or do, sorry, do I actually get negative 6? So here's how we're going to do it. We're going to do a left side, right side check. And so I'm first going to check x equals 2. Now the left side is negative 6. I've got no work to do on the left side of this equation. On the right side of this equation, I'm going to go 2. I'm going to plug in 2 for my x, so I have to square it. Minus 12 times 2 plus 10. Now remember, order of operations, I have to square the 2 first. 2 squared is 4. And then 4 times 2 is 8 minus 12 times 2 is subtract 24, and then plus 10. 8 minus 24 is negative 16, plus 10 is negative 6. So that works. Da 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 da, works there. Now I'm going to check the other one, x equals 4, the same way. I'm going to sub in a 4 for x and square it, minus 12 times 4, plus 10. Now remember, I have to square the 4 first. I have to follow order of operations. So I do 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32 minus 12 times 4 is 48 plus 10. Um, so uh, 32 minus 48 is negative 16 plus 10 is negative 6. Boop, 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 boop. We are correct. That doesn't look anything like a check mark. There we go. Okay, now the answers to the quadratic equa equation is actually called its root. So the roots of this quadratic equation, that one here, is actually x equals 2 
4, x equals 4. It has two roots that correspond um, to the answer. Now, it's actually easier um, if we're looking for the uh, x-intercepts. So um, it, it's often easiest to find and easiest to use technology to find where it crosses the x-axis. So to make the math easier, when a zero is involved, we can rearrange the equation to get this side equal to zero. And if I rearrange that equation to get that side equal to zero, it's going to look like this. I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So now my equation is 0 equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 16. And now I'm going to graph that function. I'm going to graph the function where y equals 2x squared minus 12x plus 16. So I've graphed that function. That's what we have here. And now I'm interested, I'm not interested in all of the things. I'm only interested in when y is 0. Since where y is in our equation is 0, I'm only interested where y is 0. Last time I was interested where y is negative 6. Now I'm interested where y is 0. And notice I actually get the same answers. But it's much easier to read them off of there that says x equals 2 and 4. And it's easier to read off the graph on the x-intercepts because, well, the answer is just right there. Okay. So that is using um, quadratic equations or graphs to solve a quadratic equation. Now, finding the x-intercept is something we have already done. It's reasonably easy to find an x-intercept if the equation uh, has had the square completed. But completing the square isn't always easy. And it's not always completely accurate. So we will learn three other methods of solving quadratic equations. The first method we have just demonstrated here, uh, that is solving by graphing. To solve by graphing, you need to remember how to graph a parabola. And then you just have to see where it crosses the x-axis. Now remember, to graph a parabola, it must be in completed square or vertex form first. And before you start to complete the square or vertex form, it has to be in standard form. So you have to have a y all by itself, you have to have one side equal to zero. Okay, we're actually, I'm actually going to show you how to use the graphing calculator. And you have this whole thing on your handout. Uh, using a graphing calculator, since graphing by hand is not very accurate, we'll not spend any time on that method. There's a few questions in your homework to actually graph by hand. Um, you have to remember how to do that from the last unit. The graphing calculator has a built-in function for finding the x-intercepts of a function. X-intercepts are also known as the zeros of a function. So example one, find the roots of 40x squared equals 10x minus 9. Now this is an equation because there's no y's. I'm looking for a value of x that's going to make the left side and the right side equal the same thing. Okay. And we know it's quadratic because there's an x squared term. And so I can't just rearrange to get the x by itself because x squareds and x's don't go together. So we need to rearrange to make one side 0 so that I can swap around parabolas and whatnot. So to make one side 0, uh, I'm going to take this, um, take this side, because I like to keep this positive if I can. It doesn't matter, but I like to keep it positive. So I'm going to subtract 10 and add 9x to both sides. Subtract 10, add 9x. So what we actually have is 40x squared plus 9x subtract 10 equals 0. So the parabola we need to graph is the one where we have y equals 40x squared plus 9x minus 10. That's the parabola we need to graph. And then I'm only concerned about, since this was actually a 0 and not a y, I'm only concerned about when the y is 0. In other words, the x-intercepts. So let's have a look. This is how we're going to do it. And I will do it on uh, my graphing calculator as well, but the instructions are right there. So we're going to press y equals. Let's turn this on first. And I'm going to clear the memory. Second plus 7, 1, 2. And now we'll press y equals and we'll enter that equation. 40x squared plus 9x minus 10. And when we press graph, we get this really long, skinny parabola. 
Um, so if we adjust our window settings, and that's down here, if we adjust our window settings, and I've given you good window settings, but we can have a look at the actual graph and say, since we're looking at this graph, it looks like it's, it's not coming out very far. So if I have it go from, say, negative 2 to positive 2, I'll get most of the graph. Uh, and I'm just barely getting the bottom there at negative 10, so we're going to pull it down a little bit further to negative 12, and that's what I'm doing in the window settings. In the window settings, I take my x's from negative 2 to positive 2, and then my y's, my y min wasn't quite minimum enough, so I'm going to go minus 12, and let's have a look and see if we can see it a little bit better. Now, what we're really concerned with here are the x-intercepts. Those are the things we want. And so I'm going to show you how to get the graphing calculator to find the x-intercepts. And it's, you have these instructions as well, but here goes. You can watch me do it. Uh, I'm going to press second and then trace. And I want the zeros. So before we've looked at minimum and maximum values, but now we're going to look at the zeros. So I'm going to press two because I want to find the zeros. Now, here's the key. Um, we have to move the cursor to the zero we're finding first. Don't pay any attention to the fact that it says left bound right now. Just take it to the zero, close as, um, as close as you can get to the zero you want to find. Now we pay attention to the fact that it says left bound. So we're going to move the cursor key a couple of clicks, the left cursor key a couple of clicks, and then we press enter. And it changes its question. Now it says, right bound. Okay, so we're down to the next one. Down here it says, now the calculator will ask you for right bound. So we're going to take and click the right cursor key a few times until that cursor is past the intercept. And then we press enter. Now notice there's two little arrows pointing at each other at the top. So you get this little situation where there's those two arrows pointing at each other at the top. If they're pointing away from each other, you've mixed up your left and your right. So now notice that the calculator asks you for a guess. And guess means go back to the intercept and press enter. And now we get, it tells us the zero is negative 0.625, which we never would have gotten if we were graphing that by hand. Now we can repeat this process for the other x-intercept, and I've got the whole screen capture here, but I'm going to do it on, um, on my emulator as well. So now I want to do the other one, so I'm going to go through the process again. I'm going to go second, trace, second, trace, <laughs> second, trace. Oh, this doesn't want to work. There we go. I've got it now. Second trace, we want the zero, so I'm going to press two. And now it asks for a left bound, but I'm going to ignore the fact that it says left bound and just move my cursor key to the intercept I want to find. So that's the first step. Always put it on the intercept you want to find. Now it says left bound, so I'm going to press the left cursor key a few times. And press enter. Now when it says right bound, I'm going to press the right cursor key a few times until I'm past the intercept, then I'm going to press enter, and then I'm going to go back to the intercept for a guess. And when I press enter, it gives me the answer. It says it's 0.4, which is what you have on your uh, handout as well. And so that's actually finding the zeros. So just to recap what we, what we did there, the very first thing we did when we got a quadratic equation um, let's just give you some random one here. Say I gave you 2x squared plus 5 equals 7x. If that were your random quadratic equation, um, the first thing you would do is get one side equal to 0. So you would take whatever side you want to make 0 and make it 0. So I would, in this case, I would subtract the 7x on both sides. And you would have 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 equals 0. And then you would erase the 0 and put a y there, and you graph that equation. That's the equation that you graph. But once you have it graphed, remember that I didn't want the whole equation. I was only concerned with the zeros, which are right along the x-axis. And so then you use the graphing calculator to find the spots 
where it crosses the x-axis. And that is your lesson for today.